Typically in football, the biggest clubs have the biggest fan bases, and as such, the biggest stadiums to accommodate all their match attending supporters. Barcelona play the biggest football stadium in Spain, AC and Inter Milan play the biggest football stadium in Italy, and Manchester United play in the biggest club football stadium in England, with the largest stadium, Wembley Stadium, playing host to the national team and cup finals. I have done a few videos about stadiums, or stadia I should say, value stadiums in the title and elsewhere, since it is in much more common parlance in the past, and as I've previously stated, I do have a bit of an odd fascination with football grounds. The most recent stadia related video I did was in regards to the seven football grounds that are closest together, and that got a great reaction, so it seems I'm not a total freak in taking an interest in stadiums across the globe. Your Ground's Too Big For You is a chant you will hear up and down the United Kingdom on a Saturday afternoon directed at clubs whose stadiums have a large number of empty seats. Today I wanted to take that to an extreme and take a look at some of the most disproportionate stadiums in relation to the clubs that play at them. So third tier teams with 1,000 fans playing in a 40,000 seater stadium for example. I hope the concept is clear enough. Before I start, YouTube are forever telling me to ask people to subscribe in the introduction of a video rather than at the end, since a lot of people don't watch the entire video, which I don't like to do, but bizarrely I must say that it does seem to work. So if you're one of those people and you're a fan of the channel, please do go ahead and subscribe, and feel free to follow me on Twitter at at HRTC7s as well. We're getting pretty close to 200,000 subscribers now, at which point I said I'd do a Q&A and a face reveal and all that malarkey, although it does occur to me that I don't actually own a camera, and a quick Google suggests a half decent one doesn't come cheap. So if you could not skip too many of the pre-roll ads and watch as much HITC7 as possible over the next few weeks, that'd be great. Blimey, the people who berate me for going on for too long in the introduction to videos are going to have a filled day in the comments on this one. Anyhow, back to the video. Here are seven small football clubs who play at huge stadiums. Seoul Eland When a nation hosts the Olympic Games or the World Cup, especially one without much existing infrastructure for such sporting events, there tend to be some white elephants left behind. It's happened in Brazil with the hosting of both of the world's premier sporting competitions in quick succession, and it happened in South Korea and Japan when the two nations jointly held the 2002 World Cup. Seoul Eland's home ground, named the Seoul Olympic Stadium, was constructed, as its name suggests, as the centrepiece of the 1988 Summer Olympic Games in Seoul. With a capacity of 69,950, the Seoul Olympic Stadium is an impressive venue, larger than Atletico Madrid's recently constructed Wanda Metropolitano, Benfica's Estadio de Luz, and Arsenal's Emirates Stadium. One might assume that it plays host to one of South Korea's footballing titans then, but one would be badly mistaken. Seoul Eland were only actually formed in 2014, and they play in the K-League 2, the second tier of South Korean football. In the 2018 season, the club averaged just 689 fans at the 69,950 capacity arena, meaning the stadium was less than 1% full on average. That has jumped to almost 3,000 this season, despite the fact the club, a second bottom in the division, but running at close to 4% capacity, is still pretty miserable, and more than worthy of a place in this seven. Esporte Clube Flamengo I mention Brazil whilst talk about Soli Land, and it is to the largest nation in South America that we had for sixth place. Now most of you will have heard of a Brazilian club called Flamengo, who are six-time Brazilian champions, but we're not talking about that Flamengo, who played their home games at Rio's Maracanã Stadium. Esporte Clube Flamengo haven't played in the top flight Brazilian football since the mid-1980s, and they currently play in the lowly Campeonato Brasileiro Serie D, the fourth tier of Brazilian football. Despite this, the club has a stadium which could hold the combined capacities of Italian giant Juventus Stadium and Premier League side Bournemouth with room to spare. The Estadio Governador Alberto Tavares Silva, better known as Albertoa, which is the club's home, long had a capacity of 60,000. This was supposedly reduced to 44,200 a few years ago, but is now said to have risen back up to 52,296. God knows why, since the two teams who play there, 4th tier Flamengo and 3rd tier River Atletico Clube, don't have a prayer of filling. River Atletico Clube have been out of the top flight for even longer than Flamengo since 1982, but I went with Flamengo since they play in the division below River. Flamengo's average attendance figures don't seem to be recorded, but their division's average is said to be just over 1,000, which would be roughly 2% of the stadium's capacity. The Albertoa's ground sharers Flamengo and River do have a rivalry, known as Rivengo, a truncation of both clubs' names. Hwasong FC We're straight back to South Korea in fifth place, with the stadium that World Soccer Magazine described as the mother of all white elephants. 
The thinking behind building the Hwasong Stadium in the village of Huangnam Up, which has a population of around 70,000, is difficult to comprehend, as is my pronunciation of the village itself. The country was already littered with large stadiums with no demand after the 2002 World Cup, many located outside of the most well-populated cities, so building another stadium essentially in the middle of nowhere made little to no sense. They did it anyway, a great big whopping 35,270-seater in fact, with an unusual futuristic design which incorporates an integrated sports complex as well. As you can see, this is not a small stadium, but its regular occupants are a very, very small club. Hwasong FC, who have a logo that would strike fear into the heart of any opposition fan, were only founded in 2013, with the sole purpose of giving this white elephant an occupant. Competing in the fourth tier of Korean football unsurprisingly means they don't attract thousands to their home games. Hyangnam Up Village is only 30 miles from Seoul, where FC Seoul play for passionate football fans, and it's also not the easiest to access for those who live outside of the region. Hwasong averaged just a couple of hundred fans a game, meaning their training ground would be plenty big enough for their current level of demand, and the fact that they play at a stadium larger than half all Premier League grounds is, put simply, rather daft. AC Armasina Mixing it up because we don't want this seven just to consist of South Korean and Brazilian teams, AC Armasina have historically been a much bigger club than those mentioned in this video so far, but not anymore. In total, Messina have spent five seasons in the top flight of Italian football, but they now languish in Serie D, the basement division of league football in Italy, just about clinging on to their professional status. 1990 World Cup Golden Boot winner Salvatore Scalacci actually began his career, and indeed spent the bulk of his playing days playing for Messina, turning out for the club in the fourth, third, and second tiers. Messina have had multiple enforced relegation due to off-the-field discrepancies over the last decade or so, sometimes clawing their way back at the Italian footballing pyramid only to have their league status revoked once again. The Stadio San Filippo, which opened in 2004 and holds 38,722 fans, replaced the club's old 11,900 capacity Stadio Giovanni Celeste. In their first season at the stadium, Messina finished 7th in Serie A, the highest ever league finish ahead of the likes of Roma, Lazio and Fiorentina. Crosstown rivals SSD FC Messina, recently renamed FC Messina, moved into the 11,900 capacity Stadio Giovanni Celeste, but the two clubs are now divisional rivals in Italy's fourth tier. ACR Messina currently average around 1,500 fans at home games, whilst FC Messina average a little over 700, despite a capacity of over 50,000 between them. Santa Cruz Santa Cruz are a curious little Brazilian club who haven't always been quite so little. Founded in 1914 by a group of boys all aged between 14 and 16, they were nicknamed the Team of Boys, and drew attention by pulling off some impressive results against much more established local opposition. They were the first team in their region to allow black and Afro-Brazilians to play for the club, which helped them both on the pitch and in terms of their support offer. In 1915, they recorded the biggest comeback in Brazilian football history, scoring six goals in 15 minutes to go from 5-1 down to 6-5 up. They are the club where Brazilian legend Rivaldo began his career, they were the opposition for Pelé's 1,000th appearance, and they even beat the Brazilian national team once in 1934. There's a lot of Santa Cruz trivia then, and in the late 1960s and 1970s, the club competed in the top five of Brazilian football. Recife's mayor wanted to give them a venue worthy of their stature, so the Estadio José do Rego Maciel, named after him, but better known simply as the Estadio do Ruda, was constructed and opened in 1972. The stadium could hold 64,000 people, but Santa Cruz clearly felt that wasn't enough, and in the 1980s, it was expanded with a fresh capacity of 110,000. Safety regulations meant the stadium never crammed that many in, with the record attendance of 90,200 coming for a friendly game in 1994 between Brazil and Argentina. The stadium has since been reduced to a more modest 60,044 maximum capacity, but that's still pretty enormous when one considers Santa Cruz's standing. The club had a pretty miserable mid-2000s, dropping all the way down to the fourth tier. They've since climbed back to Serie C, the third tier of Brazilian football, but the Estadio do Arruda still looks more than a little out of place. The average attendance in the division is around 3,000, and the only chance Santa Cruz have of filling the ground is to draw Sport Recife in a cup game or to get back in the same division as their near neighbours and rivals. Queen's Park the relationship between Queen's Park and Hamden Park is a fascinating one which dates back almost 150 years. The current Hamden Park was actually Queen's Park's third stadium, and their third named Hamden Park. 
When it opened in 1903, it was the biggest football stadium in the world, and along with Celtic Park and Ibrox, Glasgow had all three of the biggest grounds on earth. Its capacity was soon expanded from 100,000 up to its peak of 150,000 in the 1930s, and the record attendance at the stadium was 149,450. The world's largest attendance for a football match at the time, it remains the largest, for an international game played in Europe to this day. Queen's Park are the oldest club in Scotland, having been formed in 1867, and they were one of the best sides in Britain at one time. Between 1874 and 1893, Queen's Park won the Scottish Cup 10 times, as well as reaching the English FA Cup final twice in the 1880s. However, Queen's Park's strict amateur status has seen them fall away as money rose in the game over the years. They haven't played top flight football since the late 1950s, and having celebrated their 150th birthday in 2017, they were relegated into the fourth tier in the 2017-18 season. As well as their historical significance, Queen's Park has more recently been the first professional club of Liverpool star Andy Robertson and legendary Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson. With a current capacity of over 51,000, Hampden Park is the second largest stadium in Scotland, but it won't be Queen's Park's home for much longer. Following the expiry of a long-term lease, the club agreed to sell the ground to the SFA in 2018 for £5 million. As part of that deal, Queen's Park will move to the neighbouring Lesser Hamden in 2020, which is a little more suited to their 562 average attendance. The Honourable Mentions There were loads of stadiums that could have featured in this seven but just missed out, and I'll gladly take the opportunity to mention a few of them here. We'll start with Daejeon Citizen FC, who play in South Korea's K-League 2, but play in the 40,000 plus capacity Daejeon World Cup Stadium. Then there's fourth tier German outfit, Almania Aachen, nicknamed the Potato Beatles, who moved into the 32,960 new Tivoli Stadium in 2017 for their only season in the Bundesliga since the 1960s. In neighbouring Austria, SK Austria Klagenfurt are surely worthy of an honourable mention. Competing in the second tier of Austrian football, Klagenfurt's Wuerthersee Stadion can hold some 32,000 people. Pyongyang City Sports Club may slightly deserve a place in this seven, playing at the very large 50,000 capacity Kim Il-sung Stadium, but since North Korea don't publish attendance figures technically, for all we know they could be selling out every week. No, they're almost certainly not. To rattle off a few others, the likes of Barry, Gateshead, Mohun Bagan, Selangor FA and Guangzhou all warrant honourable mentions. And please do leave your own suggestions in the comments and subscribe to HITC7s. While you're doing that though, here is your top spot. Le Jao FC Taking top spot when it comes to small clubs with ridiculously massive stadiums, Brazilian outfit Le Jao FC really do not belong in a 69,349 capacity stadium. That stadium is the Estadio Nacional Mane Garincha in the Brazilian capital of Brasilia. Named after Brazilian legend Garincha, the stadium was redeveloped slash reconstructed between 2010 and 2013 for the 2013 Confederations Cup and the 2014 World Cup at a cost of 900 million US dollars, making it the third most expensive football stadium on earth and the most expensive outside of England. The stadium was maxed out for all seven World Cup matches that it hosted, as well as the opening game of the 2013 Confederations Cup, with close to 70,000 in attendance for every game, but it seemed little had been planned for after those games. 900 million US dollars is an awful lot of money for eight football matches, and despite initially looking fantastic, the stadium is already beginning to show signs of a lack of TLC. No decent football teams in the region and no real appetite for live football means the Estadio Mane Garincha rarely gets more than a couple of hundred fans in attendance for football games, a far cry from its 69,000 plus capacity. Instead, it is now a bizarre sort of function room, wedding venue, local government meeting place, private party venue and everything in between. The stadium car park is even being used as a garage for the state's municipal buses. Both 5th tier Brasilia and 5th tier Lejao play in the massive stadium, but whilst Brasilia can get up to 1,000 fans at home games, Lejao rarely get more than a few hundred. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, feel free to give the video a like if you enjoyed it, in fact please do, and make sure you're subscribed to HITC7s, oh, and head over to www.englandsgreatestdefender.com to have your mind blown by the best football book ever written.